I had a thought the other day that I'm running out of anger. Sure, there's plenty to be angry about, but I'm just running out of anger bandwidth. For instance, most people that know me know that I have a depth of anger reserves for any type of racism. However, since the 2016 election, well, if I'm being honest, since the 2008 election, overt racism has constantly been on the rise in the U.S., and my ability to generate new outrage for every offense has sharply decreased. It's June 29, 2018, and I'm sure many of you can scroll through the recent headlines and find something that's very anger or outrage-inducing. Each instance requires its own measure of anger, but I'm sure many of you will find, like me, that you're running out of the necessary energy it takes to stay angry. I think this is why it's good for people to laugh. I have found that even at my most angry moments, something that's funny is still just funny. So consider today's episode to be a distraction. Instead of focusing on the things that are making us angry, let's shift focus to squirrel! Welcome to yet another exciting episode of Time Well Spent with Ronald, the podcast that nobody asked for, yet somebody is listening to. I'm Ronald. All right, full disclosure, this episode isn't about a solution for anger depletion. My mom told me a story about a recent struggle my dad had with squirrels in their backyard, and it was funny enough that I thought it would be a welcome distraction for many of the recent news events. Nothing specific, just take your pick. So sit back and listen to a discussion I had with fan favorite Peggy Lee about some squirrels. So I heard dad is locked in an immortal battle of wills with a squirrel. Ah, yes! <laughs> dad, uh, squirrels five, dad zip. Tell me, tell me what's going on. <laughs> So we've had lights in our backyard for the longest time. You know, we like the little lights. We hang them on our little, um, um, the little fence here. So we have a second house in, you know, townhouse and we have the little fence. So we have lights out there. We've lights out there ever since we've been here, you know, 20 some odd years, your dad hangs lights out there. So it's really nice. So here recently, I want to say within the last maybe, um, four months, four or five months, the squirrels have been chewing through dad's lights. So dad goes outside and he looks, why are these lights not working? Like, pig, pig, the squirrel is chewing through the I said, oh, hon, okay, well, let's just get some more. So he goes and he buys four, and it takes four strands. It takes uh, one, two, yeah, well, th- actually three strands because he puts them around the fence and up the tree. Go four, ahead. Four strands of lights. Four strands of lights, okay. yes. And he puts them around and up the tree, right? So he put the first ones that were out there, and they're nice and they're colorful, because it was around Christmas time when this started, right? The lights weren't coming on. Found out the squirrels had chewed through not one, not two, but all three strands of lights. <laughs> so Dan goes out and he goes, Pay, I think the squirrels are chewing. I said, oh, huh? The squirrels are not bothering me. Yes, they are. I'm going to get me a pelican. No, wrong. you cannot shoot the squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> so he orders some more calls me down peg these are the lights I ordered oh okay great those look really nice honey they're nice and colorful so he puts out another set of <laughs> Of lights out there, right? And a few months later, one side goes out, goes dark, <laughs> and then, <laughs> then another one goes dark. And he comes in. I see. Why are the lights not working? I said, I don't know. I think the squirrels been out of the camp. Man, they ate through another set of lights. I said, Oh my god! So I was upstairs doing something. He came in. Pig, pig. You know what's going on? I said, What? What? What is happening? Is everything okay? I found out where they chewed through. They actually chewed through the cord. I said, okay, honey. All right. Then, so that's it. I'm going to get them. I'm going to get those squirrels. I'm going to leave those squirrels alone, Ronald. They've been here longer than we have, right? (laughs) So one day I was sitting here talking to Marilyn. I was FaceTiming her and one of the squirrels actually ran up, put his hands on the window, the back, uh, the sliding door here, the French door, and looks in to see who's in here. He goes back down the steps and comes back with two of his buds and they disperse. They so, go up the tree. <laughs> is, let me just clarify here. You're telling me you're sitting in the house. Yes. A squirrel comes up to the back door. Yes. Puts his paws on the back window. Yes. Looks at you. 
Yes. Runs back, gets a couple of his friends. Yes. And comes, looks through the window. Yes, I have pictures. And then they disperse. Yes. And they go up the tree. So I get up and I go watch the squirrel. He goes up the tree, takes the red bulb off of the light, chews it off of the strand of lights and goes over into another tree and sits there and examines it. And then after he chews it a while, he spat it on the ground. Did, I he, said, did wow. he like stare you in the eye after he did it? <laughs> I was in shock. I was in shock and dismay. I said, oh my God, these squirrels, right? So dad and I did some analyzing and to figure out what was going on. What? We've been here 20 some odd years. What would make these squirrels go mad now? I told dad it was his vet. He had bad vibes. He went out there and the old squirrels were watching him and he would be muttering under his breath. Because he's putting up the lights and they could sense it. I said, you know, sir, squirrels are sensitive creatures. He says, no, they, no, Peg, they don't know my vibes. Enough. Go in there and Google it. Google the squirrels, Peg. I'm like, honey, why do I have to Google the squirrels? Did he tell you that he Googled the squirrels and how he had, or he found an unsubstantiated story about squirrels that jumped on a rock waller and took him apart? So clarify the story. So what did, what did he tell me the rock waller story? <laughs> he said, he said that he Googled a story where a, 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 a band of squirrels, a band of squirrels, a band of squirrels, <laughs> a band of squirrels came and jumped on this rock, rock waller and ripped him to pieces. I'm saying, well, they had to be rabid squirrels, right? <laughs> They're dangerous, man. They're dangerous. Squirrels are dangerous, honey. They're just squirrels. <laughs> so, but anyways, um, we did some analyzing and we have figured out that it's the colored lights. We, up until December, we only put white lights out there. So this year, I mean, last uh, Christmas, we wanted colored lights out in the back. So we, you know, put up the Christmas lights out there. They look so pretty, we just left them. And the squirrels do not like the colored lights. <laughs> so we're going back to, he's he hasn't ordered them yet, but we're going back to the white lights, you know, the more, <laughs> maybe the colors provoke them. You know, I don't know. But anyways, dad's like, he's like, give me a pellet gun. I'll take him out. <laughs> so status update right now. Mm -hmm. No lights up. No lights up. Uh, the squirrels are winning five to up because he's put up uh, five sets of lights Man. and the squirrels are winning five. Elder has a uh, zip. <laughs> I checked in with my dad to get his side of the story. And he mentions he felt he lost an ally to the squirrels. It also seemed like he might not be so ready to let this fight go. At one point, you mentioned that mom was in cahoots with the squirrels. Yeah. Because she was, she was rooting, rooting them on. Yeah. Them, I mean, the squirrels won, the squirrels two. But the things changed after she saw the squirrels' true nature. Right. But she had to get up to the squirrels five before she can change it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's and, on the podcast. Right, so. and I'm zero. Yeah. But according to you. Well, she said I'm zero because I didn't kill one. Yeah. But I would have killed him. If I would have sat and waited on them. In the dark? No, I would have, they don't come out in the dark. Okay. But I would have waited in the daytime. They didn't see me. Sometimes they call, they didn't, I didn't been out there yeah. before and they didn't know I was sitting out there. Yeah. I'm sneaking out. You're talking about squirrel stalking now. I'm in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I can do anything I want back there. That's true. Yeah. I didn't think of it that way. Okay, when we come back, we talk more with my dad about his recon mission to the tree line, and we discuss the current status of the lights. Hello, it's Peggy Lee. As many of you know, Owens Big Ron Studio is continuing on its path forward, producing dope content for overthinkers like you. However, in order to be successful, we need your help. This is why we started our own Patreon campaign. Patreon is a site that allows listeners like you to contribute directly to the creators they love, like us. Currently, we have multiple levels for you to get involved on, with the lowest being just $2 a month. For those of you that enjoy time well spent, Patreon helped us pay for 
the new theme song we created with the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. So now, not only do you get the satisfaction of helping Oh It's Big Ron Studios grow, you get to see the direct impact of your contributions to the execution of our content. Please visit patreon.com slash oh it's big ron. That's P A T R E O N dot com slash oh it's big ron. We look forward to partnering with you to expand oh it's big ron studio. Now, let's get back to the show. I'm told you know where the squirrels live. You've scoped out their homes. Exactly where they live. I went down there. And did what? Look and see where they are. They're looking out down at me and I'm looking up at them. They got nests in the trees right there on the wood line. So basically, it was an idea of uh, the squirrels have come and scoped us out and ate our lights. Yes. And you scoped out their home to let them know, exactly. I too know where you live, exactly. squirrel. Your mother at one time thought they was living in our trees, but that's a no-no. Mm-hmm. They're not going to live here. They live on the fort, on the tree line? On the tree line. Okay. I got nice trees. Yeah. But they know not to live here. Because <laughs> they won't get no rest. Why not? Because. You don't have a pellet gun, though. I'm going to wake them up. I got trash can lids. <laughs> <laughs> I make so much noise, they're going to flee to the wood line. So what's the current status? You have your, I see your lights are hanging in the back. Yeah, and look good, too. Yeah, they do. They're going to come on shortly. But they're white lights. White lights. So you're going to tempt the colored lights again in the winter. I'm going to put the colored lights up. But you think you'll be successful. Why? Because they're not out then. Why? Because they're hibernating like the bears. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So you have a better shot this winter. Yeah. Okay. I know when now to put them out. I know when to take them down. Okay. Yeah. So you just know not to leave colored lights up right. throughout the Springtime, year. Springtime, they're coming. Mm-hmm. So, and now I found out, I thought they didn't live but 18 months, but some of them can live up to 18 years. Yeah, that yeah. sounds about right. And some of them same squirrels be coming at me, looking at me. Yeah. You know, they know me. I know them too. You know them too? Yeah. But see, now... They look raggedy, so I know he's getting older. Mm-hmm. So I mean, he can't run that fast. Well, neither can you. Yeah, I can get him. <laughs> I, I still can run. I can run faster than them. That's true. They don't exercise. I don't see them at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they got a squirrel gym over there I don't know about. My dad spent his early childhood in the sticks of Aiken, South Carolina. So there's no love lost between him and animals. His go-to method for most wild woodland creatures who encroach on his territory is to seek and destroy. But let me assure you, no woodland critters were harmed in the making of this episode. I continue my conversation with my mother, who mentions even more battles with woodland critters, and we muse on whether or not the squirrels have a strategy, and if in fact these are the same squirrels we dealt with before. Spoiler alert, as my dad mentioned, they could be. Do you remember, so it seems like dad has a history of creatures in the backyard that he's gone to war with. Yeah. And this, I, I think all of them prepared him for this. There was a, Yeah, well, I mean, okay. There was the skunk. Oh, yeah, the skunk. Do you remember when dad saved me from the skunk? Yes, and I you do tried remember to, that. You yeah. tried to throw me into it. Tell me that story. Okay, so dad was upstairs sleeping. Your, your part of your chores was taking the trash out and getting the trash ready for the trash man on um, Tuesdays and Fridays, I, was, I believe. So this particular morning before 6 o'clock in the morning, you were outside supposedly getting the trash together. And you said, "There's a sk- you, you were outside doing that. And I came, I was upstairs. You came in and said, Mom. Mom, there's a skunk outside in the backyard. I said, Ronald, get yourself out there and get that trash out. I don't care what's in that backyard. Dad, it, who I thought was sleeping, pig, don't let them go out there with the squirrel. I mean, don't let him go out there with the skunk. He'll spray him in everything. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get that stink in his clothes. <laughs> The funny thing is, I remember that story. That is exactly what happened. You said, get back down there and take that trash out. Right. I went down there, and as I'm gearing up myself to get ready to go back out there and face the squirrel, dad comes out. I'm sorry, the skunk. We're still thinking about squirrels. To face the skunk, dad comes down, like, dressed and ready to go outside. And I was like, yes! (laughs) So we did it together. (laughs) Luckily, the skunk was gone, but we did it together, and it was was good to go. Yes. But that's not the only creature that's been in the backyard. No, no. We've had a snake we've had a snake yeah he killed the snake we've had two snakes you don't know about the second snake this past last spring 
Last spring when dad was cleaning up the backyard, we had it all nice and everything. We had, you know, sp- cleaned up everything and opened up the umbrellas and had the pillows all fluffed out. And I was out there admiring our work. And I walked over and there's a blueberry bush over here on this left-hand side. Mm-hmm. And I looked and it looked like a green rubber hose mm-hmm. laying in there. I said, <laughs> <laughs> so I said, oh, Ronald, is that? And I came on my tippy toes running real fast. Dad went over there and got him. He couldn't catch him. He got away. But the first one he did kill. Yeah. I did. We also had a groundhog. Yeah, but didn't y'all poison oh, the groundhog and it God. died and it stunk up the house? Oh, my Lord. That was the worst. I think that was the worst because the groundhog had, they burrow so deep underground and... Whatever poison your father gave him, he ate it and died in one of those holes. And in the basement, his decomposing body scent filled up our basement. And here I am. I It smelled like there was a dead animal <laughs> in my basement. And I couldn't figure out how to get the scent out. So it dawned on me, maybe... If baking soda would work in the refrigerator to suck the stench out of the, out of there, maybe it would work downstairs. And do you know it worked? It actually worked. So nobody there, nobody got that body. No, that body is down there mummified or whatever. They don't. <laughs> they don't mummify. <laughs> So it's decomposed now. Man. It's decomposed. It's gone. Oh. It is gone. We never had any problems with the groundhogs. Oh, they were horrible. I used to have beautiful mums mm. in the backyard. Beautiful big white blossom mums in the backyard. And this groundhog would come along. I came home a couple of days and what's happening to my mums? All the tops are gone. He would come around and munch as if it was his personal salad bar. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's be clear here. So dad has, he's killed one snake. Yes. He chased the other snake off. Yes. He chased the skunk off, we'll yes. say. Yes, yes. He killed a, a groundhog. A groundhog. I don't know if we, I think we had a possum out there too. I remember the possum. I don't I, know what happened with that. I don't know. He what never it, caught the possum. possum. No. Mm-mm. Okay. Are the squirrels avenging <laughs> their critter brethren? <laughs> this could be a story of uh, revenge. Yeah. But it seems like they waited a quite a long time to come back for revenge. Because remember now, these aren't the same squirrels. This is a new generation of squirrels, right? This is not the same generation of squirrels that were there, what, 10 years ago. How long does a squirrel live? Well, I mean, think about it. These squirrels are radicalized. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> yes. These are squirrels that grew up in this battle. Yes. And they yes. know their enemy well. Yes, they do know. And these it. are coordinated attacks. They are. You're right. Because five strands of lights and yes. not one squirrel death on no. their hands. No, no, no. So no. it seems They're like, very bold. Mm. Because one time I opened up the door and one was sitting here on this post. And I opened up the door. And I thought as soon as I opened the door, he'd run. He looked over his shoulder and said, what? <laughs> <laughs> Can I help you? I thought, oh, my God. You just going to sit there? I finally went and got a broom and kind of shooting. He kind of sashayed off at his leisure. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of radicalized, I believe. Hmm. Uh, how do you think Dad would feel about this same story? Would, would he say this to tell the same story that you've told? <laughs> Yeah, but he, his would begin with something like, the squirrels would have been long, gone a long time ago if, if your mama had let me get a pellet gun. I'm like, you know you. That's how this story would begin with him. He can't go shoot at the squirrels. Why not? Ronald. He doesn't want a dead squirrel on his head. He really doesn't. Yeah, One that he's killed. Yeah, the last thing you want weighing on your conscience is the body of a dead squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> Ask the Rottweiler. <laughs> So they still have lights in the backyard, albeit they're the boring white ones rather than the festive colored ones. After hearing my mom's side of the story, my dad did have at least one rebuttal. One dispute we would say is that mom says that you lost, you would say you won. I did win. Okay, but technically you lost. I didn't lose. Well, how would you describe losing in this situation? I still have lights. Yeah, but they're, isn't that like your 25th set strands of lights? Look. (laughs) They're not going to win. 
So the bottom line is as long as you have lights up in the backyard, you have won. I won. I won. I won. I have to admire my dad's persistence and optimism. I probably would have given up after the second set of lights. However, my dad lives to fight another day with the woodland critters of the backyard. I want to give a special thanks to my parents, fan favorite Peggy Lee, and the original Ronald Young, Sr. Also, special thanks to Lizzie Peabody and Alana Nevins for editing support. As I mentioned at the top of the episode, there's a lot going on in the world right now. Everything doesn't look so great, and we're running out of anger for every issue that arises. If you find yourself emotionally numb or need a change of scenery, I would encourage you to unplug and maybe go spend some time outside in nature. Maybe bring your family and friends with you and enjoy talking about what little distractions they have in their lives. I can promise you that every minute you spend replenishing your outrage reserves will be time well spent. Time Well Spent is a production of Owitz Big Ron Studios. Theme and additional music provided by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. Outro music provided by Michael Corte. Do you want to reach out and connect about the show? Have some feedback? You can find me on all the social media things, including Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram, at Owitz Big Ron. That's O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. Time Well Spent will return next month. Thanks for listening. Now let's get back to the show. 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 Okay. Now let's get back to the show. Now let's get back to the show. <laughs> now let's get back to the show. <laughs> so not only do you get the satisfaction of helping Owen Speak start Ron's studio. All right, so we put the paper down. Hey! 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 Oh, it's Big Ron to get involved. <laughs> Start from that. You got the first half. Start from that and just spell Patreon. Right. Okay. All right. Oh. Sorry, we're now recording. <laughs> so you got to start from the top. <laughs> That was a good rehearsal. <laughs> oh, my God. Hello, it's Peggy Lee. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Did you get that line? Yes. As many of you know. Hold on.